This ministry is made possible by the faithful support of viewers like you. And so... This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Welcome to church. Wherever you are in the world today, we just want to welcome you to this church without walls. Literally no walls. Yeah, we, we're outside <laughs> again. And we're going to be outside all month because we are focusing on being thankful. And there's a lot to be thankful for. And we just look around here. I know earlier I was looking up at the birds flying over and they may fly over again. There's geese and birds and all kinds of stuff here. And uh, Anyway, we're just totally grateful. One of the ways we can show our gratefulness is by verbalizing things we're thankful for. So, I don't know, you so, share so what we, we love do that. with our family. Yeah. Well, one of the things we do with our family is we've always done this. In fact, we now we do it with our grandkids. And we, we ask them, what was the best part of your day? First of all, it makes them start thinking positive thoughts. Well, they're, what was the best part? And they start thinking of all the good things that went through the day. Second of all, it's not an open-ended question where they can say yes or no that's right. <laughs> you know, or fine uh they have to they have to think and then they have to, to answer and it makes them happier and you know we can ask that question to anybody ask it to your co-workers ask it to your neighbors if somebody's unhappy just say hey what's the best thing that happened to you today and see what they do well i can't tell you how many times i ask kids what was the best part of school and you know what the answer is. Recess. Recess. They always say the same thing. <laughs> then you say, Recess. what's the second best then thing? Then the second best thing. And uh, so anyway, we that's we, we do some of that a lot. And uh, you, you were sharing with me recently some of the health benefits. Absolutely. People that are thankful, that show gratitude, actually sleep better. You can rewire your brain. You have less pain. And you actually have less depression and anxiety if you're thankful. And those things have all been tested in the laboratory and they actually have measured, I think it's the, the hypothalamus in the brain. Oh, perfect. Yeah, well, so. hey, let's continue to give thanks in all ways and in all things, because remember this, God is blessing you. Yes, he is. There are laws of nature and absolute realities that cannot be ignored. If we do, we are left to, to live with the inherent consequences of our choices. After all, who has jumped off a 50-story building without a parachute or a squirrel suit and, and lived to tell about it? The law of gravity will not be defied, and neither will God's spiritual realities. When we fail to tithe or give back to God what is rightfully His, we frequently suffer the natural consequences of that choice and miss out on God's blessings. What happens when we tithe? We discover that the 90% goes further than the 100% ever did. <laughs> That's the upside down economy of the kingdom of God. No matter how much we think we can't afford to give 10% of our income to God, when we do, God always provides and fully satisfies our needs. For more, go to drshuler.org. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the goodness that you give to us each and every day. Teach us, Lord, to have our eyes wide open to your many blessings especially in this month of November, where those of us that live in the USA have a day of thanksgiving. We thank you for this land, the United States of America. Lord, create in us a heart that sees the good in troubles. Lord, take away any stress, any anxiety, and may we live 
with a grateful heart. We thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being a part of Vital Living Sunday this week with Robert and Donna Schuler. Our ministry is made possible by the faithful support of people like you from around the world who join together to help spread this positive message of God's love. Would you consider partnering with us? It could make a world of difference. Well, we are continuing our series today on the promises of God. We started last week by realizing that God has a promise to us that as we give our 10%, we can put him to the test and he will prove us faithful. And so I gave you and I gave everybody an opportunity to, to accept a challenge, a 90 day challenge. And the challenge is pretty simple. Bring your tithes to the storehouse and put God to the test. I am so confident that God is real to his promise that if you wish to bring your tithes to this church with no walls, and as you can see, there's no walls. I'm outside. You can see the ducks swimming behind me. If you bring your tithes to a church with no walls, I personally guarantee that if you do not feel the blessings of God where you need them the most, for some people, they, don't know, they do not need blessings of more money. But the way to get the blessings that you need, maybe it's health or maybe it's emotional stability or maybe it's building relationships with people you've lost contact with. If you're in a situation like this, take the 90 day challenge and here's how the 90 day challenge works. You start giving and God will bless you according to the measure you give. Because last week we talked about the Old Testament. The Old Testament is pretty adamant. Bring your tithe. That's 10% of your income. People have asked me, what do you mean 10% of my income? Is that before or after taxes? <laughs> and then I always, and then the, the historical response to that is, well, do you want your blessings before or after taxes? Do you want your blessings to include your, your taxes? Or no, I don't care if I'm blessed with tax wise or not. And um, so that's just a little bit of humor. But the fact is, the Old Testament is very rigid. It is this, a 10% numbers only. That's it. Bring your tithe to the storehouse and put me to the test, God says, and see if I will not bring out such a blessing upon you that your storehouses will not be able to contain it. <laughs> That's a huge blessing. And those blessings come in a variety of different ways. But that, again, is the Old Testament blessing and the Old Testament challenge. Today, I want to introduce you to the New Testament challenge, the challenge that we have from Jesus himself in Luke 6. In Luke 6, Jesus says, Give, and it shall be given back to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. For with what measure you give, it shall be given back to you. So we live in, a, in the New Testament with this, with this covering of grace. And the grace is that God knows how difficult it is for us as human beings to live in, a, in, in this world of, of laws. And as such, he wants to allow us the freedom to be able to experience life to its fullest and at the same time have the blessings in the proportion to our faith. And so we are given grace, we are given love, we are given hope, we are given the gifts of the Spirit. And so in this text, Jesus puts the tithing and the giving into a proper perspective. It is with what measure you give that it shall be given back to you. So what most people think is, well, I, that means I don't have to give 10%. If I, can, if I can give 5%, then that's good. And that's true. If you have only 5% that your faith will allow you to trust God to bless you with, then by all means, give 5%. If it's $1, use $1. But here is how it works. It also works the other way. According to the Old Testament, it's a tenth and a tenth only. But in the New Testament, it can be a tenth or you can go to double tithing. Did you hear me? Double tithing. That's why when you go to a church that practices tithes and, and offerings, they'll say we are now going to collect our tithes and offerings. Now, an offering is that which goes beyond the tithe. Your second 10% or your second 5% or whatever that might be. The first 10% is your tithe. 
the second per, the second percentage of anything beyond a tithe is your offering. And so, according to the New Testament, we have the freedom to give more and receive the blessings based upon what our faith will allow us to give. I just find that thrilling. And I know it works. I saw it work firsthand through a dear friend of mine. His name was John Crean. He actually um, is known by many people because of his company, which was Fleetwood Enterprises. He made mobile homes, mobile trailers, uh, his first trailer that he built, he built in his garage with his hands and his sons. They put this thing together. He then hauled that one trailer out of his garage and took it someplace where he was able to sell it. And then he came back and he built another one and sold that one and another one, sold that one. And he continued until all of a sudden he had to make two and three at a time, five at a time, ten at a time. <laughs> and he was extremely successful. So. John Crean had two things of value when I met him. He had his ranch in San Juan Capistrano, known as Rancho Capistrano. <laughs> and then he had his, his, his net worth in his company, which, is a, which was a publicly held company. And at the time, this was in 1981, his company was valued at a, his, his stock value in his company was valued at about $5 million. His, his ranch Capistrano, his ranch, was valued at about $5 million. Well, I didn't know any of this at the time. All I knew is that I drove past this beautiful piece of property off, the, off of the five freeway and I pointed to the ranch and I said, that's where I'm going to build my church. <laughs> I shared that with my dad and he said, Robert, if you're serious, call John and go meet with him right away. So I did. I literally, back in 1981, there weren't cell phones. So we pulled off to the side of the road. I got on a pay phone. I called the secretary and I said, I need to meet with John Crean. I'll, I'll meet him anywhere, anytime. Just tell me when and where. Now, to tell you the way and the speed with which God works, this was Tuesday of Holy Week. Thursday of Holy Week, I'm sitting behind the desk of John Crean. And I'm saying, John, God wants me to build a church. And he wants me to build it on your ranch. <laughs> if you're laughing, that's appropriate. I, everybody I tell this story laughs. It's, it's, it's comical. But here I am, a 26-year-old kid. I don't know any better. And guess what? John leaned back on his chair and he said, Just last night, my wife Donna and I decided we're going to give the ranch away. I couldn't believe it. And then he drops the bomb. Boom! The bomb was this, we gave it away. We signed the papers, it's gone. But a man living by faith, anything's possible. And to make a long story short, <laughs> because it is a long story, I could spend 20 minutes telling the story. To make a long story short, uh, six months later, the ranch was actually given to the Crystal Cathedral Ministries. I became the executor of the ranch and I built a church there, and a retreat center, and a school K, th K through 12. Fabulous property, fabulous thing. But the point of the story isn't that. The point of the story is what happened to John? Because remember, half of, his, half of his net worth is his ranch. The other half is his stock in Fleetwood Enterprises. Here he is giving away not 10%, not 20%, not 40%, but 50% of his entire net worth. He's giving it away. How does that happen? And what happens to a person who has that much faith? Well, here's what happened to John. I can't, I can't guarantee that's going to happen to you because your blessings may come in different ways, such as in in relationships or family or whatever you need the most because God is a God who cares and loves and is only going to give you what you really need and is going to make you a better person and draw him closer to himself. But this is what happened with John. The same time he gave his ranch to the Christ Cathedral Ministries so that I could build the church there. 
an article came out in the Wall Street Journal that said the the wave of the housing industry future is prefabricated construction and the forerunner of prefabric prefabricated construction is none other <laughs> you got it than Fleetwood Enterprises so here's this other 5% and what happened it went from $5 a share to $35 a share split went up to another $35 a share <laughs> I can't do the math on that but I can tell you he got a lot more, a lot, lot, lot more uh, than what he gave away. A hundred percent more. That's the way God works. We can't measure it. We can't understand it. We, the, the math doesn't just work for us. But here's what we know. We know that in all things, God works together for good to bring you the hope and the joy and the happiness that you need as we live in faith. And so I present the 90-day challenge to you again today. If you haven't accepted my challenge, do it. Mark it down on your calendar this date or whichever date you decide to make your first contribution. Then write a check, go online. There's a, you can donate through Facebook. You can donate through drshuler.org. Make that donation, make that pledge. Take the challenge, accept God's promises, accept the word of Jesus. Jesus said it himself, with what measure you give, it shall be used to give back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. <laughs> so, take the challenge, don't procrastinate, do it today. And so let me give you a word of blessing. And now may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always and forever. Amen. No matter where you are in the world, you can be a part of this dynamic faith community. Go online to drshuler.org today and download our community app. There you can request prayer and pray for others. Receive positive, encouraging content from Dr. Schuler and more.